and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program with me, Mr. Kraken. And today we are going to build our first aircraft. I know, we've already been to space, but we haven't yet mastered atmospheric flight. So we're going to change that. Uh, what we're going to do first is go into Mission Control and see if we've got any of these uh, observational surveys. Oh, in flight below. Okay, yep, yeah, that's what we want. Below 17,000, because what we're going to build won't get above, or stay above, 17,000. Uh, we'll look in the tracking station. And... Oh, lovely. It's literally a short hop from the Space Center. Okay. Uh, we've got a bit of cash, so what I'm going to do is upgrade the runway... Here we go. So we've now got a bit of tarmac. We haven't got landing lights or anything like that, but we're taking off in the daytime. And if you are not taking off in the daytime, you can click this button here to warp to the next morning. I recommend taking off and landing in daytime when you're starting out. Okay, let's go to the space plane hangar. Okay, so we'll start with the Mark 1 cockpit. We'll right-click, take out the monopropellant. Because it just adds weight at the front end, which we'll probably not be able to balance out completely. Uh, we'll take a science junior. We'll, we'll make this a science mission. We'll take as much science as we can. We'll double it up. Then we'll go to payload and get a service bay. Open it up. And whoop. Slide across. Holding shift. There we go. Right. Uh, let's put a uh, battery in the back there. And then into science. We'll take a storage unit. And we'll hold alt so it snaps. Just like with the rover. Uh, we'll slide it back to about there. And then we'll put Mystery Goose in there also. We'll put two in. Here we go. We'll take a single barometer. And a single thermometer. There we go. Anything else needs to go in there? No, I don't think so. We'll close it up. And then we'll go to communication. Take a Communitron 16S, turn snap on so it's dead center, and pop it on the top there. Okay, now we'll go to aerodynamics, tail connector A, hold alt if it starts going silly. <coughs> Excuse me. We will put a tail fin on there. We'll right click on the tail fin. And we only want this to control the yaw, so we'll disable pitch and roll. We'll then take two more tail fins and angle them slightly. Turn symmetry on. There we go. So they're not following the central line of the craft. Next up, we will go to fuel tanks. We'll take... A Mark Zero liquid fuel tank. Aha! Just realised I didn't rotate the uh, service bay. So I'll do that now and then correct the stuff behind it. Here we go. Make sure snaps on so it rotates nicely. And then pull the tail back into position. Come on. There we go. Yep. That's what we wanted. Right, so let's get our, that doesn't look right, ah, why did I forget, one more, yeah, okay, that's it, Ooh, that seemed to totally flip over, my mistake, Yep. 
Right, now that should... Here we go. <sighs> then we'll go to engines, put two Junos on. And aerodynamics, small circular intakes on the front. These will be enough fuel and thrust to get us airborne and stay airborne for quite a while, really. We'll turn snap off and just slide them in a little bit. Them out a touch. Put them up a touch. As long as the engines are pointing underneath these tail wings, we should be good. Um, speaking of wings, we'll get a sweat wing. Make sure symmetry's on. And what we'll do is we'll snap there. And then we'll rotate up. And then we need to slide in a little bit. Ah! I'm just going to click the wrong thing. Click on move tool. There we go. Turn snap off. And just rotate along. Right click to move your camera around. Just realised I had not yet said that. Sorry. Slide it forward a bit. And uh, next up, we'll take our AVR8 winglets, which I don't know why, but I really like them. We'll turn snap on and we'll put them dead centre. Then we'll move them across, turn snap off again, slide them down so they're just a tiny bit above our main wings, and then bring them in. And forward again to about there. Okay, we're looking good. Now we need some landing gear. We've only got the dead basic landing gear. And it pains me, it really does. I hate these gears. Uh, so let's turn on our aerodynamic overlay and our center of mass overlay. Now we're going to need some tweaking because our centre of mass is a little too far ahead of our centre of lift and we still haven't put on our elevons. So we'll go back to aerodynamics and grab them, pop them on the wings, uh, rotate them around, there we go, steady, and pop them on the end there. Okay, so we now need to adjust so that this blue ball, our aerodynamic overlay, is just meeting our center of mass so we can do that a number of ways we can turn off snap drag our engines back a bit down and we can move these wings forward a bit but they that will also bring our center of mass because they aren't exactly light they, in comparison to the vehicle they contribute quite a bit of weight and then we'll just touch these forward a bit that should be okay that should be fine uh, okay right let's get the landing gear sorted now you want your landing gear to be just behind your center of lift so it tips nicely uh, so we'll turn snap on make sure symmetry's on and pop them there literally just off center of lift now we're using these horrible things because these have got brakes and the steerable landing gear really doesn't have that much brake strength at all uh, so I'm adjusting the spring and damper strength because these will bounce like all hell if we leave them on default since patch 1.4 uh, 1.3 never seem to have a problem with bounce and We'll pop that on there. Now we want the rear landing gear to be... Oop. Turn snap off. We want the rear gear to be lower down than the front. Just to assist with takeoff and lift. About there. Let's have a look. If we click on the cockpit and slide it down... Let's put the front wheel just on the floor. And yeah, you can see there's a teeny tiny difference. That 
Every little helps. Okay. I think we're about ready there. <clears throat> we're at 30 parts out of 30 parts, which is, you know, spot on the money. If you wanted to economise a bit and take some science off, if you're not comfortable with landing, you can put um, a parachute on. But whatever you do, make sure it's over your centre of mass. And ideally, I'd take two of the uh, radial mounted Mark IIs and just put them on the sides, either side of the centre of mass. So you can control how you come down a lot easier. Okay, so the last thing to do before we go is adjust the elevons. Pitch, roll, don't want that to control your, and the front, yeah. We'll turn off roll for that, and whoop, we don't want that, yeah. Your, eh. pitch, there we go. I'm going to turn everything off for these rear wings. Um, They're literally just there for stability, really, and lift. They're locked in place. That's what we want. Okay, so we are all good to go. Aha! Sorry, folks. Let's lift these up a little bit more. And pop this wee chappy down a bit. Bring the wings up a smidge. Okay, that's more like it. There we go. Save, launch. Okay, there we go. You can see the bounce there. If we hadn't adjusted the spring and damper settings, uh, I'm just going to turn the brakes on. If we hadn't adjusted those settings, then this would still be bouncing all around. Horrible. Rotten. Never mind. Right. Before we take off, I'm going to open up the service bay because we don't really want to do it while we're flying, because that'll just add drag. And I'm going to right-click on the experiment storage unit and pin it so that when we get science, we can just shift it straight in there. There we go. Okay, we are ready to take off. Jeb's ready. He's always ready. You can always trust Jeb. Right, press B to take the brakes off. Fire up our engines with spacebar. Hit Z and hit T. Look at this lovely tarmac. No more dirty brown runway. So we can probably take off in this. Um, oh, we're veering a bit. Probably take off, well, now. Probably take off at 70 with a craft like this. Ooh, already got some science. Thank you. Uh, probably take off at 70. Most craft you can take off by 100 metres per second. But, um, yeah. With this old... Close the doors. This has got great control. The G-force doesn't affect it very much. Oh, hello. More science. Thank you very much. We'll transmit that one. Keep that one. And it didn't use much of our electric charge. Now these engines that we've got uh, do have alternators, so they will generate electrical charge. Not a great deal, but they have alternators, so it's all good. We're heading over this way, because there's a little bit of bonus money waiting for us on this island. Uh, but we'll hit M, and we'll click on the marker for our contract and activate navigation. And then it'll show up on our nav ball. That's our heading. That's what we want. Okay, so general rule of thumb for any aircraft. If it can hang just above horizontal, it's a good stable craft. Uh, right now we're getting the drag effects as we're approaching 300 meters a second. And let's be honest, this 
is a pretty standard sort of aircraft. There's some extra drag from the uh, gear there. And that antenna was too big to fit in the service bay. But overall, it's pretty good. It can get to nearly 300 metres a second on thrust alone. Let's go down a little bit lower so we get the ping for that. So we'll get rid of that. we we'll get the ping for this old airstrip. I've attempted landing on there just the once, and I will never attempt landing on there ever again. There we go. We've got a milestone. We have discovered an abandoned island airfield on Kerbin. Just under five grand. Thanks very much. So we should be getting into the zone for our contract soon, because it's really not that far away from KSC. And when we do, a message will appear up in the center, but also the icon on the nav ball will start flashing. There we go. Now entering sector PCM WH. So we need to take a crew report. There we go. And you can reset the experiment because contract's completed. You don't need to keep the data that you got. 13k. Easy peasy 13k. Now let's head back to land. I'm going to pull this manoeuvre just because I wanted to demonstrate that the g-force down there meant nothing to this craft. I do enjoy building aeroplanes. I really do. I'm not amazing at landing them. So this could go horribly, horribly wrong. And in fact, I'm going to quick start, uh, quick start, quick save. In order for me to be able to just go, nothing at all wrong happened there if I cock up the landing. You can just see um, KSC over there. We're going to head in this direction. Uh, 360 degree heading for a bit. And then we'll line up with the runway when we're a little bit closer. Uh, for now, we'll go and click view on Jeb's portrait there, and you can get a lovely cockpit view with all working uh, instruments. So our current surface speed is 300 metres per second. We've got our nav ball. Uh, we've got our heading again down there. SAS is on. Stage is good. Green light on the staging. Let's press T. Look, there we are. Do -do -do. Vertical speed. Basically, all the instruments work. Whoops. Press C to get out of this view. And I'm going to drop my speed right down to the third notch on the throttle. And now I'm going to press Q. Tilt over. Always use roll and um, pitch as opposed to your, which is DNA for your manoeuvres. It's just a hell of a lot easier. Use your your just to make tiny corrections to your heading, but generally you just want to stick to using Q, E, S and W. I'm going to bring the speed up a little bit, because we're still quite a little little way out. Uh, I'm going to turn the brakes on, because I want the brakes to be activated as soon as we land, because we haven't got any reverse thrust on these engines. Okay. Oh, there we are. Broke my overall there. By mistake. I did mean to hit E. Okay, so we'll do a little manoeuvre that'll trim a hell of a lot of speed off. And do, 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 do. now we get to about there, and again, here we go. 73 meters a second, which will now increase, but that's fine. We'll drop our altitude a bit. Nice and gentle. I'll make those tiny corrections. A 
and the not so tiny ones. Landing speed, 100 metres is fine. Just got to be very, very delicate. I'm going to drop the speed on the throttle down to the first notch and then drop us in a bit and lift the back end up. Whoop, that was a bit extreme. Steady. There we are. As we get closer to the runway, just lift the back end up so that that touches the ground first. There we go. And if we had reverse thrusters, that's what we do now. Now we're on the tarmac. We'll use D and A just to stay in a nice line. And... There we go. Mission successful. Good landing. Nearly went very wrong, but it was a good landing eventually. And we have landed on the runway, which means we should get the maximum amount of money back for recovering our vessel. That's what matters most. <laughs> we also got some science. Uh, in fact, I'll get these last bits of science just so I don't have to see that pop up in uh, Science Hero Now again. And we'll recover the vessel. There we go. 23.6 science earned. Lovely. Thank you. And if we look here, part value and the funds we retrieved should all match nicely. <laughs> Lovely jubbly. Uh, next, done. There we go. That was your first atmospheric flight. Now then, uh, we're going to go back out in that plane. We're not going to land again after blah, blah, blah. But we're going to take it back out and we're going to get some more science. And this episode will finish while I'm out in the air, more than likely. But just like in space, and just like at the Space Centre, there are lots and lots of biomes on Kerbin. And there's, there's quite a few in the vicinity of the KSC. We've got uh, the grasslands over here, if I remember rightly. Uh, we've got highlands. We've got um, desert over here, even though it doesn't look like desert on the map. There is a desert biome just about here. The main desert is this side of the map, but on our continent, on not Africa, there is a desert. Um, so we're going to fly off and get some of that. So we'll take off. To be fair, I probably should have got Bob on here and landed and reset experiments then taken off again, but... Again, with this landing gear, it's tricky. Uh, certainly doable, but potential for nasty accidents. And there we go. We're away. And we'll swing over straight away. Oh, I love the maneuverability of this craft and how easily it copes. It's always a joy. Always a joy. Right, so we'll head over towards the mountains over there first. Whoops. Steady on. Also, if you want to, ad to adjust your trim, you would hold Alt. So, say for example, I wanted it to hold steady just above the horizon. I hold Alt and then use W and S. Here we go. Kerbin's Grasslands, transmit that one. Transmit, there we go. Temperature scan. Mystery goo. Uh, okay, I'll reset that because there wasn't much. Material study. Uh, again, not much. I'll reset. Get it later if I can. Okay, so the altitude of these mountains is Probably about two and a half thousand meters, 
So I'm going to raise the nose up to about 20 degrees just to get a nice climb. And that speed that we just built up flying horizontal should make us climb nice and quick. That's the main trick to atmospheric flight, is getting enough speed so that you can climb. Okay, might even be a little bit higher. We'll aim for that little gap over there. Woo hey Excuse me, going for a little spin there. I had some washing I had to dry out. Now in version 1.4, there is a lovely new feature. And that is the Kerbal Parachute. Deployment takes a little while, so it's not like an emergency thing. Now here we go, over at Kerbin's Highlands. Um, so yeah, if you need it in a pinch, you've got to be very, very quick. Oh. Open that up. Collect data. There we go. Temperature. Oh, so we had the highlands and now we've got over the mountains as well. Lovely. Yeah, okay, that's going to stay the same for most of it. We'll head over towards that desert biome. Again, look at the G-force on the side there. Aircraft not breaking up. That's what you want. <laughs> Obviously. Now, you can warp while you're flying an aircraft like this. I wouldn't recommend it too much, but you can. Like, if you stayed at uh, times full warp for a while, you would end up going nuts. And, obviously, don't forget that you're in warp, because if you make a tiny correction, you're going to spin out. Let's go into M, but this is, again, the joy of having something that can sit nicely just above uh, the horizon line. So somewhere around here, there, it is classed as a desert biome. Let's see if it still does. It did at 1.4. Now you see how this is flicking. That's because I've got warp on. And it's... I'm literally just giving tiny taps. And it's way overcorrecting. Here we go. Kerbin's Deserts. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll take the signs. Do, 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 do. Now, if we were cautious people, we wouldn't land <laughs> on something this bumpy with this landing gear. But, um, you know, there's an EVA report to get. And if I go to science, let's have a look. Crew report while landed at Kerbin's Water. 
Brewport 1 landed at Kirwin's Grassland, Island, Mountains, Deserts, Badlands, Tundra, Ice Caps, Northern Ice Shelf, all of these places to get. Oh, hello. So there's even more at KSC that I didn't know about. Oh, wow. Okay. That's interesting. But we've got a decent amount of science so far, but we've still got all of this to get on Kerbin. 206 experiments to retrieve. That's crazy. This is why I like science here and now. It tells you. It tells you. Okay, folks, I think that's it for this episode. I'm going to fly around, get myself some science. I'm probably going to land as well, uh, or attempt to. See you next time for the next instalment, where we'll probably go up into space in some fashion, you know, as it is Kerbal Space Program. I have been Mr. Kraken. You've been awesome. If you want to be notified when the next episode goes live, or when I'm uploading new content from other games, please do subscribe and hit that little bell icon to be notified. Follow me on Twitter at RealMrKraken and on Twitch, Mr. Kraken Plays, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye